Welcome to another broadcast from Evangel Worship Center in Mariana, Florida. Our service times are Sundays at 9.30 a.m., Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m., and our office is open 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. For more information about our church, visit our website at evangelonline.net or call 850-526-2232. Sing as I beg 
Power of Christ, 
That I, that I know is from God, and I want you to hear and listen to what the voice of the Lord has to say to you this morning, and to be encouraged, to be encouraged in what God wants to say to, the, to, his, to his bride this morning. So let's, let's uh, if you have your Bibles, you can open them to Philippians <clears throat> chapter number 4. You got it? You can hold right there. We'll start in verse 6 in just a second. You ever ask the question, why me? Why me? Everybody at one point or another gets to a place in their life where they ask the question, why me? But there's a couple different interpretations, I believe, of even that question. A lot of us get caught up and we ask the question, why me? And we find ourselves in times of desperation, in times of trouble, in, th- in issues that we go through in our life. We ask the question of God, why, why me? I have to think of probably a better version of that question is, woe is me. Woe is we, why me, God, of all the people? God, I love you, Lord. My neighbor don't love you near like I love you. God, why me? And it's not that I don't feel like we should ask that question. I just feel like we should maybe think about the way that it's asked. Several years ago when I was, uh, my dad owned a, a demolition company and we were in Tallahassee. And he was telling me about a situation where a friend of ours called, and he said, Johnny, I need you to give a reference for my son, Scott. Well, his son was a terrible worker, lazy, showed up late. I mean, he, he was not. He said, I need you to give him a reference. He, he put you down as a reference. I need you to give him a good reference when they call. And my dad said, he said, he said dude, I, I'm not going to lie to the to other company. I'm not going to lie to him and tell him what a good person he is and how, what a great hard worker he is. And the guy said, no, 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 Johnny, it's, it's not about what you say. It's just how you say it. Right? You would be lucky if you could get Scott to work for you. (laughs) 
You see, it's all about where you emphasize in that sentence. Why me? You see, it's not the question, but sometimes I feel like it's the, I find myself asking that question in, in, in kind of a different sense, especially in the last few months. I ride down the road and I say, God, why me? God, why me? Of all the people that you could bless, God, why me? God, why did you choose me to be your, your mouthpiece? God, I know a lot of people that are a lot better. God, that they would do you more justice than I could do you. God, why me? God, why me? Why did you give me such a great family? God, I got, I got the best wife, the best little boys. God, why me? What did I do to deserve the blessings the way that you've given them to me. God, why me? Why have you given me great children and a wife? Why have you given me great parents, great grandparents, great siblings? God, why me? Why have you given me such great friends and, and, a, and a church family? God, why? Why me? What have I done to deserve to be born in America where I have the freedom to to, to come on Sunday morning and, to, and to, to raise my hands and to give you honor, to give you thanks. What, what, what have I done to deserve such a great blessing in my life? What have I done to deserve that? God, why me? God, why me? I don't know what I've done to deserve to be in a place where I have the, the basic necessities, drink, clean drinking water. Food. God, why me? You see, it's not the question of, uh, and, and I'm, I'm not telling you that you, we don't get to the point of, God, why me? But I think that, I think that we, have to, we have to see both sides of it. I think we, we get enough, that God gets enough of our, why me? That he needs a, God, why me? Why did you choose me? I think God needs us to, I think we need as a church, as Christians, as Americans, we need to get a better perspective of God, why me? That we can see the blessing of God, that we can see his hand at work in our life. It's not that we don't face difficulties. It's not that we don't face job loss. It's not that we don't face turmoil and trials. It's not that we don't have struggles. But through our struggles, the blessings of God are just as real. You see, you see clearly whatever you're focusing on. And if, if we're focusing on our issues, if we're focusing on our problems, if we're focusing on the storm, then we see the waves plenty good. We see the raindrops and we see the hail and we see, we see that plenty good. But at some point we have to refocus what we're, what we're looking at and we have to say it's not about the storm, it's about the God through the storm. That God is faithful not because I think it, but because God's word says it. But because God's word is true. And look at, look at where I'm at. That the things that I, I'm upset about, the things that I obsess about, God, my, why did my stocks take a crash? Listen, I don't have to worry about my stocks taking a crash. Amen. So people ask, you look at the stock market, why would I? Why would I look at the stock market? It don't mean nothing to me. It's just numbers, pluses and minuses. I don't have enough money to put in the stock market. My money don't mean nothing to them. That's the good thing about living for Jesus. You, I mean, I don't have to worry about all that. Just know what I got right now. Add, that, add it up my checking account, you know. My savings, and that's it. I don't, you don't have to worry about stocks and all the, mm -mm, don't have to do that. Thank you, Jesus. One less thing for me to worry about. <laughs> we're worried about things like we're worried about what we're losing. We're worried about what we don't have. 
about what we, what we need to be gaining, where we need to be if we're going to retire in enough. And the commercials on TV are littered with, you know, are you sure you're ready to retire? Well, I, my answer is always no. I don't know that they can hear me, but my answer is always no. I don't, I don't know that I'm ready to retire for a long, long time. But I know that God provides for me. I know that every week all my bills get paid. I know that every week my, my, I, we eat. Jesus. I know that my basic needs are taken care of. That my God is faithful to me. As I am faithful to He is faithful to me. But we get so focused and so caught up on not having this or not having that that we forget and we lose sight of what we do have. Of the blessings that just abound in our life. Look around you. Look to the person to the right and tell them you're blessed. Uh-uh, uh-uh, no. Don't nobody believe you're blessed like that. Mm-mm. Look, I need you to tell somebody you're blessed like you mean it. You're blessed. Don't look at me. Look at somebody beside you. Y'all all still looking at me. I don't know if y'all know how to work this. This way, that way. You're blessed. I'm blessed. I was preaching the other day in youth, and and Tatum laughed at me when we got home. But I was talking to the kids, and I'm like, I'm living the dream. And y'all may look at me and be like, you're crazy. I am crazy. I'm living my dream. There are times I, I, I sit and I watch my children. And I know for some of y'all, the thought of two boys, but you, it gets you a little stir crazy just thinking about it. It doesn't me. It does not. It does not have that effect on me. I watch them even when they're awake. I watch them when they're sleeping. And I just like, I'm living the dream. I'm living the dream. I look at my beautiful, I'm living the dream. My beautiful wife, my beautiful children. God, thank you. My, our youth, I love our teenagers. They show up at my house all the time unannounced, just knocking the doors. They show up on my day off. I t- Christian Cheney's not here, but if he ever sees this, I'm calling you out. <clears throat> he showed up at my house just on my day off. It was 8 o'clock in the morning. I was asleep. I hear a rap on the door. I think it's like UPS. I, I'm not sure who it is. So I'm, I, I, don't, I, I didn't, you know, I'm, I was asleep. I was in my boxer, so I run to the door. I'm like, hello? It's Christian. He's like, hey, what you doing? <laughs> I was sleeping, man. No, I was in there just reading my Bible. I just got up in the morning just, <laughs> just seeking the Lord, just seeking the Lord. <laughs> but I'm thankful that I've got, that they want to, that they don't mind. They think that they can come by. We don't ever tell them no. Except when I was sick, a couple of them came by and said, can we hang out with PJ? She said, you cannot come by and hang out with PJ. He is sick. You have to go home. You cannot come. (laughs) Philippians chapter chapter 4, verse 6 says this. Don't worry about anything. You ready? I mean, are you good now? I mean, this is what the word of God says. Don't worry about anything. I'm done. Let's pray. God, thank you that we don't have to worry about anything. Ready? He's going to trade you. He's going to trade you. He's he's trading right now. Ready? He says, instead, trade. Don't worry about anything. Trade. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. And and we do that now. We don't don't have no problem doing that. We tell we do tell God what we need. We be, we be like, God, I need. God, I need. Oh, God, I need. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. And that's our refocus. That's what we have. We refocused and said, we thanked him. We've asked him for what we need, but have we thanked him for all he's done? Have we thanked him for all he's done? Because I, I feel like that's a, that's a key element 
That's a key element. Here's what it says. If you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Ooh. You want the peace of God that passes all understanding. You ready? Tell God what you have need of and then thank him for what he's done. And it said when you do this, when you, when you ask him for what you need and you thank him for what he's done, then you will experience God's peace. And now, dear brothers and sisters, let me say one more thing as I close this letter. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right. Think about the things that are pure and lovely and admirable. Think about the things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Do not watch the news. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, in my, that's just in mine. That's a footnote. My, that's my bad. <laughs> Do not watch the news or very often. You can watch the news, but you just remember who God is. Amen. Let's just remember who God is in all of this. We can be overwhelmed and we can, be, we, can, we can feel like we are flooded with all the negative and all the bad. But God. But when you insert God into it and you understand that some of these things have to happen. People ask me, are you worried about end times? No, I ain't worried about them. I know what's got to happen. I've, I have read the Bible. I know what's got to happen. So I'm not upset when it happens. I'm like, yeah, God... He said that already. He said that already. So I'm not surprised. I'm not like, oh my, what are we going to do? I'm like, yeah, God had already told us that, see. And so I'm not upset that that's going on in the world today. That there are wars and rumors of wars that, that there is the evil like, like mankind has never seen before. I'm not surprised by that because God told us that in the end, when he was going to come back, all these things, that they were going to happen. So I'm not surprised by it. I, I see it. I go, okay, yeah. And he also tells us that he is still in control. <laughs> that he is still God. That he didn't slip off the throne all of a sudden. That he knows exactly what he's doing. That nothing's caught him off guard. That he's not worried. Neither should you be. Some of y'all didn't amen very good on that. And that's better. That's better than y'all amen. I'm preaching better than you amen. I'm just going to be honest with you this morning. You better get your amen right. Come on, yeah. There you go. That's better. That's better. We're going to work on this morning. I, I'm not done, so we're going to work on it. You got time to fix it. God didn't slip off the throne. Think about these things that are good and, and, and admirable. And I mean, think about some good things in your life. Don't, don't worry about the news. Don't worry about what's said to come. It's going to come anyways. But so is, so is he. Because what follows all of it is Jesus Christ. When he splits the eastern sky, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what follows all of it. So I'm not worried because I know it's coming right behind all this because I ain't worried about ISIS. ISIS should be worried about Jesus. Yeah, wait till he comes back. And I want a front row seat. See, I'm not one of these that likes to, I'm not squeamish. I'm not squeamish. I want to watch. I want, to get, I want to get in on that. Maybe you want to watch. I'm just saying, I want front row seats. I'm like, yeah, y'all thought y'all were bad, but Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, I like, you. I like this area right here real good. But Jesus. I worried about the end times. I'm worried about ISIS. I'm not worried about the, the, the stock market. I ain't worried. Dow Jones. I ain't worried about none of that. I ain't worried about none of that. I'm keeping my eyes on Jesus. I'm focused. I'm focused on what's important. I'm focused on the things that, that I can do. I can live for Christ. I can sell out. I can tell somebody else. I can make sure that when somebody, when somebody else is frantic and upset about the stock market, they look at me, aren't you worried about what your stock's going to do? Aren't you worried about your 401K? When they don't say that to me, people don't say that stuff to me anyways. <laughs> if they did, I'd say, no, I ain't worried about my 401K. No, I'm not worried about it. I can't be. It's not mine anyways. Right. 
It's not mine anyway. That's God's stuff. If he wants to take it all back, he can have it. Because, and Paul's fixing, we're fixing to go into that too. Hold on. Just, let's, let's get back right here to verse 9. Keep putting into practice all you've learned from me and heard from me and saw me doing, and that the, and the God of peace will be with you. Verse 10, how grateful I am and how I will praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I know that you have always been concerned for me, but for a while you didn't have the chance to help me. Verse 11, not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to get along happily whether I have much or little. I know how to live in almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of life, of, uh, the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty with plenty or little. I've learned to live in all those situations. And I'm okay with any of them, Paul says. And see, it's easy for you to learn, for you to be happy with where you're at and happy with, with having little or plenty if you're living in plenty. If you're living in plenty, then it's easy for you to say, I know what it's like to be hungry and I'm okay with being hungry or being full. If you're full, that's easy for you to say. But Paul was in prison. I'm not talking about three squares and a gym and a TV. I'm talking about prison. I'm talking about hole in the ground, cold, dark, damp. I'm talking about prison. Paul's writing this stuff, and I'm thinking, Paul... How can you get your mind to the place where, where you're thinking like this? I know what it's like to have a lot. I know what it's like to have little. I know what it's like to be hungry, and I know what it's like to be well-fed, and I'm okay with, with any of it. I'm good. I'm content. Ooh. Content is not a bad word. It's not a dirty word. Content is not the... Is, is, not a, a, to, is not set you up for failure. It is not going to keep you back from success. That we need to learn to be content. Man, that don't get him any amens. Amen. When I was talking about plenty and lots, y'all were like, amen. <laughs> talking about being content, y'all were like, ooh. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with content. Content is not the enemy of success. You hear me? Content is not the enemy of success. That we can focus on all the things we don't have and forget all that we do. And content says, I, it's okay. I'm going to serve God in the middle, whether I'm on this side of it or on that side of it. I'm, I'm going to continue to serve God. I'm going to continue to be who God has called me to be. I'm going to continue to be faithful. That as I was sick this week, I thought, God, how am I going to, how, how, I, how can I get my mind to think about the sermon and, and where I want to preach? And God, your word deserves better than this. God says, my grace is sufficient. You just relax, dude. I got this. Content is not the enemy of success. It's not going to keep you back, but what it will do is keep you focused. Keep you focused on what? what is right in your life and what is good in your life. You see, sometimes we get so caught up in where we want to be that we don't enjoy where we're at. We get so caught up in our goals and goals aren't bad, but if you don't enjoy the journey, if you can't enjoy the journey because you're so focused on where you want to be, you're so focused on retirement and saving every dime that you don't learn to enjoy life right now. Let's enjoy right now. Learn to, to, to understand the stage of life that you're in. Learning to understand which stage of life that you're in with your kids and with your own family and with your wife and with l just life in general. I am in the little kid stage. My kids are five and eight. Luke. Hey, holla. My kids are five and eight. They are awesome. But they're not gonna act like they're not gonna act like babies. They're not gonna crawl on the floor. They're gonna run everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. 
they're boys, so they're going to wrestle. I, that don't make me mad. don't bother me. I don't want them to act like girls. I don't mind them acting like boys. I, I just feel that way. I just feel that way. I'm just okay, I'm just okay with that. I don't, let him, I don't let them beat each other too bad. But I'm okay with where I'm at. When, they were, when, when Caleb was little and he was, a, he was an infant, he was just kind of, and you know, he, infants do what infants do. They just, they eat and they poop and they spit up <laughs> and they sleep. And sometimes they do them all at once, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that's all they do. That's all they do. And so when we first had Caleb, I was like, man, I can't wait till he can, you know, do this and do that. I can't wait till we out in the yard and can throw the ball. And so what you do with your first kid is you buy them toys that they are, they're, age, they're not age appropriate. <laughs> not age appropriate toys at all. <laughs> we bought him things that I'm like, why did we get him that? He was, just, he was one years old. Why did we get him a skateboard? You know what I'm saying? He is not Tony Hawk. We, he does not need a skateboard. He needs a bouncer, and we got him a skateboard. I, that's my bad. I was so excited about, about, about Luke and Caleb as they were babies. I couldn't wait for them to grow up and, and to do all the things that we could do together. Man, I can't wait till we can ride in the truck and we can go do this and go do that. And I was so excited about what we could do that I almost missed The baby breath, because they don't got baby breath no more. <laughs> it's, it's dragon breath now. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Luke likes to get up, and when he knows his breath is stinky, he'd up in the morning, he'd be like, ah. <laughs> Easy killer. <clears throat> I think I almost missed it. I almost missed those little, those, the, the little neck fat. You remember that? You know, the neck fat. Little pudgy rolls on their knees, their legs, just kicking in the bed. It makes me want to cry just thinking about it. You have no idea. Some of you do. Some of you are like, I'm a parent. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Now I want to knock them in the head, but I'm, but Jesus, but Jesus. We used to lay in the bed with Caleb when he was first born, and I remember, and Luke when he was first born as a baby, and we would just sit, sit there and watch him, and he'd just be like, ah, 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 like a little T-Rex, you know. <laughs> and we used to just watch him and laugh, and he would just, he would drool all over the place, and we thought it was awesome, like, a, like holy water, you know, all over. Our, I look so cute. But I almost, I almost missed that because I, so, I was so worried about the next stage. I was so looking forward to the next stage that I almost missed those baby moments that I can't get back anymore. See, I'll never be able to go back and get those moments back. Those moments have passed, and now the future is, is, is closer. Their graduation is closer. I'll never get those moments back. And we can forget in life that we can be so caught up in, in looking forward to the next moment and looking forward to the next thing that we forget what God is doing in us right now. We can forget the beauty of what God is doing in our lives and what he's doing through us and in us and around us. We can forget about it because we're looking so forward to the future. Content says, I'm going to enjoy the stage of life that I'm in, that I don't envy that we, we get to watch some of our friends, uh, Christy and Jeff, and they get to go out on date nights way more often than Tatum and I do because their kids are older and they just leave them. <laughs> we watched Jerry and Amy do it first. And they just left their kids and they were going date nights. And, and I, I, could get, I could get it. Man, I wish we could go on, on more dates like, like, like they could. I wish we could, wish we could just do more, like, just, just the two of us a little more like, like other people. We don't, Tatum and I don't do that. I can tell you honestly, we, we don't have those conversations because we're just enjoying the stage of life that we're in right now. I'm just content where I'm at. 
That I know this is where God has me. I know that God has his hand in my life. That I'm not worried about where I'm going next. I'm just enjoying where I'm at. I'm enjoying what God has for me. I'm not going to focus on what I don't have or what's to come. I'm going to focus and be happy and be excited and, and be content with what God is doing right now. Because Facebook can be from the devil. Come on, somebody. And, you, and every one of you knows why. I'm going to go ahead and say it, because, but you all know what I'm talking about. You get a, a moment, a whisper of insecurity in your life, and you'll start to check Facebook, and you'll start seeing everybody else's highlight reels. And everybody else's, my husband is the greatest man ever. He walked across the water this morning and brought me flowers, and they, we floated, and I mean, you know, like, like lies, just lies. That man has scratch marks on his face last week. I know they weren't from the cat. I know. I know it. Just don't lie. Let's, let's just be honest. Can we all be honest in God's house? Amen. But you're, you start comparing your life to someone else's highlight reels, and, and you can get real depressed. You can get real defeated. The enemy can beat you up real good and go, you know, your husband, he just don't do that. He just don't do that. And he, he may not. I mean, I haven't walked across the water in a long time. <laughs> it's been a minute since I've done it. <laughs> Somebody's wife over there said amen kind of loud. Or was that husband? Either way, I'm not. We're going to just keep moving right along. We don't. We'll pray for y'all in a little bit after service. I mean, you can get real discouraged, real defeated, real beat up if all you do is compare your life to someone else's highlight reels. I used to, we, we have a couple of students that played football for Mariana, and they'd come off and say, go, PJ, let me show you my scouting tape. And I was like, what? They said, my scouting tape. We sent it to all the scouts, and I'm like, all right, show it to me. So they'd sit down at my desk, and on a scouting tape, Every, I mean, you are a stud on this football field. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you make it every play, every block, every run, every, you know, you're the, you're the man. And you're even highlighted so they know which one you are. <laughs> and I told someone, I said, I've been to your games. Where in the world did you get all this footage from? <laughs> where, where in the world did you get all this footage from? I know, man, I had never seen that play coming. Why you... I know, I've seen you run, and no. <laughs> not possible. Not, not in this realm. Not with gravity. <laughs> they look like, that's a highlight reel. That's not the whole game. That's not a game where they get knocked down play after play. It, it even exempts games because there's some games they didn't make no plays. They didn't do nothing. But you can get so, ups, you can get so worked up, I wish I could be that good. I wish I could... Be content with where you are, with the abilities that God gave you, with the things that he's done in your life, because this is who God is for you. That's who God created you to be. Don't worry about what, what they're doing. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing and saying, because the truth is you're not seeing the dirty details. You're not seeing in between the lines. You saw one post this week and one post last week. The reason you didn't see the post in between is because they were sick. Their, their house has been foreclosed on. Their dog got shot. I mean, there's been a whole barrage of things that have happened. But all we see is the, my husband brought me flowers this morning and breakfast in bed. That's because the kitchen burned down and he was at McDonald's and he picked up his <laughs> sausage biscuit. Hallelujah. <laughs> I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I've learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it's with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. You learn to be content. Paul learned in prison. Paul's telling you, I've learned to be content. I'm okay with being in jail. See, me and God don't have those kind of talks. We were talking about the other day in the office about Joey, and he always tells a story about hiking up and down a mountain, and he gets, in the edge of the, you know, he gets to the middle of the hike, and he pulls the socks off, and there come toenails. 
right? He tells that story, and you're like, ooh, that hurts. Mm, nasty. And then all of a sudden, he starts talking about the conversation he and God have, and he says, well, God, you know, my toes, I don't have any toenails. I mean, toenails. And God says, who are you going to serve, me or your feet? And I was like, oh, see, because God don't talk to me like that. <laughs> no, no, we don't, we don't have them conversations. No, not me and God. We don't have, he don't talk to me like that. Because uh, I'd be like, God, my feet. He'd be like, yeah, I understand. You. You're just Jonathan. You know? <laughs> Wrap them up and let's, you know, let's head to the house. I, you, know, you understand what I'm saying? And but Paul's in prison. And Paul's like, I choose to be content. I know I'm here. I know that God has me here. I know that I could be out doing all kind of other things, but this is, this is where God has me. Maybe that's the only way that half the New Testament gets written is if God stills Paul long enough for him to write these letters to encourage these other churches. And what he's really doing is encouraging you and me. Whew. Could God do something like that? Could, call, could God put Paul in prison so that Paul could write a letter to the Philippian church so that you and I could be encouraged? Could God have that much forethought in mind for you that, it, that thousands of years ago that he was already thinking about you and me? That's the kind of God that we serve. He's willing to put Paul the apostle, one of the, probably the greatest apostle in the Bible. If we're going to run by stats, is he willing to put Paul in prison so that Paul could write a letter and say, I've learned to be content. So that in 2015 that we could sit in church and we can say we need to learn to be content with where we are in life. That doesn't mean settle. That means to learn to be content, to not pine away. And how do you do that? How, do you do, how, do, how does that look? How do you do that? Because now here comes the, the practical application. Verse 13, for I can do everything with the help of Christ who gives me the strength I need. For I can do everything with the help of Christ who gives me the strength I need. For I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. For I can do all things. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. That's, isn't that the scripture we see under I black on football games? That's right. But we're not talking about football. We're talking about through all, that God can do all, that, that Christ can do all things in our life. For I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That I may not be able to do it on my own. I may not be able to focus my life on my own. I may not be able to take my eyes off of what I don't have to, to see what I do have on my own. But through Christ, I can do everything. That through Christ, I have the strength to be content with where I am, to let God be who He is in me, to let me be me. To let me be content, for me not to worry, for me to focus my eyes on Jesus, for me to ask Him of what I need and, to, and thank Him for what I have. And that He's going to give me the peace that passes all understanding. That through Christ, I can do all things. That through him I can focus on what is good and lovely and pure and holy. And I can focus my life on what is right. That through him I can be content. I can know what it's like to have a lot. And I know what it's like to have a little bit. I know what it's like to be in health. And I know what it can be like to be, in, to be sick. And I know what it can be like on both of those things. In any ways I choose to follow Christ. That I can do all those things. That I can have peace, that I can be who I'm created to be, that I can be content, not because of me, but because of the Christ that I serve. Amen. For I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. 